Welcome to this new tutorial for Godot 3 in which we're going to look at the camera 2D node. We're going to see how to create a smooth camera that follow the player effortlessly almost without any code. And then we'll see how to create a camera that smoothly transition from screen to screen, but that also snaps to the grid. All that thanks to Lars Kokemo, who made this example initially with a node that you can add or remove without breaking the game. Head to GitHub, you'll find a link in the description to download the full sources for this project. So when you land on this page, you can download all the examples by clicking the green button and downloading them as a zip file. You'll find the exact example in the 2018 folder, March 16 camera to the rig subfolder. Okay, and you have a start project and the end project with the final code you can use for reference. When you import the project in Godot, the start one, you will have a player inside the level scene. If you try out the game, the player can move around. You can use the arrow keys to move. Press shift to run. The thing is, there's no camera following it, so when it gets out of the screen, it gets out of the screen. We're going to add that camera in the player scene. For that, click the open and editor button in the scene tab, and you will land on the player. So to have a camera tracking our player, select the player node, the object you want to track, and you add a camera as a child of it. It's a camera 2D node, in this case, because we're working on a 2D game example. With that, you do have to set the camera to current. This is the current camera that the viewport is tracking. So there can be one camera active at a time per viewport in your game. If you try out the game, you will see a camera center on the player at all times. So when you move, the camera moves with it. Not all the time. You can see that there's a dead zone in the screen center where the camera doesn't move. This is defined by the drag margin category in the inspector. The drag margin is expressed in units relative to the screen size. 0.2 on the left and right means 0.2 times the window's width. You can go to the editor section in the inspector and click on the checkbox next to draw drag margins to see exactly the size of this dead box. Now you can modify the drag margin to see the box expand as you increase the value and contract as you lower it. Note that 0.2 on the left means 0.2 times the window's width. So if you have 0.2 on the left and 0.2 on the right, the box is 0.4 times the width of the game window. This system has one little issue by default. If we move the character around the scene, it's not centered on the screen when the camera starts to follow it. Worse than that, the camera is actually lagging behind. If we're doing an action game or something like that, we'd rather want the camera to move ahead of the character so it's easier for him to spot obstacles and monsters coming up. We're going to solve this problem using a rigging technique. A rig in animation is the setup you'll use to allow a character or an object to move in certain ways. And in our case, it's going to be a constraint we're going to apply on the camera. So select the player again and add a position to the node. This one will name pivot. This will be a point that will rotate. It's going to be centered on the character. Let's add another position to the as a child of the pivot. And this one we'll call camera offset. So I'll move it to the right of the character and drag and drop the camera 2D on it. Now you'll see the camera didn't move and we want it to center on the camera offset node. So select the camera go down to the transform section and the no 2D and reset the position to zero. Now the camera will always be at an offset compared to the player. So if I play the game now, you will see if I move to the right, the camera is ahead of the player. There's a bit of a dead box still. If I try to go to the left or down, it is worse than before. To solve this, I'll select the pivot node to show you. We just have to rotate the pivot and the camera will follow it. We'll need a little bit of code for that. So let's click the add script icon with the pivot node selected. We'll place this inside the characters folder, create a new folder called camera. 
and we'll call this our camera's pivot.gd. If we look at the player script, press Ctrl Alt O and type player to find it. At the top, you'll find a look direction variable. It represents where the player is looking. In a 2D game, it's very common to represent the direction as a vector 2. A value of 1 represents the positive direction on a given axis. So on the x-axis is right, on the y-axis it's down, and minus 1 represents the negative opposite direction on the given axis. Minus 1 is left for the x-axis, and minus 1 is up for the y-axis. We're going to use this look direction in our pivot script, so let's move back to it. Remove almost everything, we do need the ready function. We're going to do two things. First, using the onReady keyword, we're going to get a reference to the node's parent. It's going to use the getParent method. This is one of the ways you can access your parent. The other way is to use the dollar sign, open quotes, and type two dots, which means you're going to move up one step up the node hierarchy and get that node. So in our case, it would be the player. Now we're going to add a little function that's going to convert the character's look direction to an angle that will apply to our pivot node. So let's create a new function. We'll call it update pivot angle. It won't take any parameters. It's going to get the look direction from the parent and convert it to an angle. We can do this with the angle method that's built into vector2. And we'll apply this value to the rotation property of our node. Now we have this method, we have to call it. So let's go to the ready function. We're going to call it once there. And then we'll add a physics process method because our character is a physics object. And on every physics stick, we also want to update our pivot angle. This is why we turned it into a small, simple function. But with this, you can play the game. And as you change direction, the camera will rotate with the character and move ahead of it with a small delay. So that's not very good. That's not really what we want. And this is where the built-in smoothing comes in handy. So let's select the camera 2D node. We're going to go to the smoothing category in the inspector and enable it. When smoothing is on, the camera will catch up to the position it's trying to track. And you can change the speed value to make the camera catch up faster or a bit slower. So you can see that with this code and this system, there's a little bit of jagginess sometimes in the camera. You can see that the camera is still catching up to the player, but at least the player is mostly centered on the screen when it's moving. If you want a camera that behaves differently, you'll have to code your own, essentially. And we can always move the camera offset node farther ahead and move it dynamically via code when the character accelerates or decelerates to make the camera move a bit more ahead of the player when it's running, for example. For the next part, we're going to make the camera snap to a virtual grid. For that, let's add a new position to the node as a child of the player. And we're going to call it grid snapper. This node, its sole goal is going to snap to a grid. So let's add a new script for that. We'll store it in the characters folder, camera subfolder, and call it grid snapper. We're going to handle this only with code right now. So we need to have some kind of grid. For that, we'll create a new member variable called grid size. It's going to be vector2. With this, we can make our grid cells as squares or rectangles. And on top of this, we're going to have a grid position. This is going to be a vector2 as well. But this value is going to represent the position of the grid snapper node on the grid at any given time that we can then convert to a world position, to a position inside the level, by multiplying it by grid size. We're also going to have a reference to the parent node. So let's create an onReady variable called parent. And we're going to use the getParent method to get the node's parent. In this case, it will be the player. Now we need a new function to calculate the character's position on the grid. And when I'm saying the character, I'm talking about the player, not the grid snapper node itself, right? Let's add a new function called update grid position. It doesn't take any parameters. Then we're going to get the position of the parent 
in the world and we're going to divide it by the grid size and round it out to get our position on the grid. So let's do this. We're going to create two variable. First for the x-axis, we round out the parent x position divided by grid size dot x. So we have to create two variables for the x and y axis if we want to use the round function that doesn't work with vectors. Let's duplicate the line, do the same for the y value. So we're going to get the parent's y position divided by the grid's y size and round out the value. Then our new grid position is going to be a vector2 made of our x and y values. This grid position is equal to the current grid position of the grid snapper node. We don't want to do anything with it. We don't want to reposition our node. So let's make this check. If the grid position, the position of our grid snapper node on the grid is equal to the new grid position, we return from the function. And we don't have to use an else statement. After that, we can directly assign the new grid position to the grid position variable to store it. So we can print it, process it later. And then if we change the position of our grid snapper node on the grid, we also want to change the node's position in Cartesian coordinates. Let's set the position on, of the node to grid position multiplied by the grid size. That's how we can move it to the new position. So now in the ready function, you want to call that update grid position function. And we also want to call it from physics process. So on every frame, remember that our node, the grid snapper node will only move if the new grid position is different from the current grid position. If we try to play the game now, we would have a little problem because our grid size is an empty vector two, it's equal to zero, zero. And when we calculate the grid position, we divide the parent's position by the grid size, so by zero. This would throw an error. So we want to initialize the grid size value and we'll do this in the ready function. We're going to pull a value from the OS class and can get it with the get screen size method. This will return the game's resolution in a sense, which will make the camera change position only when the player hits the edge of the screen. Now on top of that, we want to set our grid snapper as a top level node. A top level node is one that doesn't inherit the position from its parent. The way it is right now, if you don't set this node as top level, it's going to move along with the player. Once it's set as top level, it's going to move independently from the player, essentially snapping to the grid based on the player position. Now you can save and if you try out the game, you will see one last little issue in our system is that sometimes when we are still quite far from the edge of the screen, the camera starts changing position. Well, we really want this to happen only when the player hits the edge of the screen. This is happening because of the drag margin on the camera. When you are in this dead area, the camera doesn't move. So it's going to still change position outside of it, but it can be placed anywhere inside of that box. Disable the drag margins to fix the issue. And now you should have a Zelda-like camera transitions. It does not block the character when you hit the edge of the screen. All that with a simple grid snapping node. That said, I have to thank Lars Kokemore for providing the example initially. If you want to see more, you can check out the course. Be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.